As you may have seen, the average level of the player base while playing heavies is catastrophic. That's why I propose to you today a quick guide to teach you everything you must understand about those, how to play them, place yourself correctly so you can outperform yourself even more. The first thing we must insist on is the definition of a heavy tank, because in World of Tank Blitz, a lot of tanks are labeled as heavies without sharing their playstyle. That's why this guide will be focused on heavies using traditional gun equipped with a proper armor. When it comes to the playstyle of a heavy tank, it's important to understand your role. Heavies are designed to push through on the battlefield, to brawl against your opponents and mostly be the one taking shots for the team. This is why we can already erase two behaviors you never want to adopt with heavies, known as camping and sniping. Leave that for tank destroyers. What you really want to focus on while playing heavies is being at the first line. But in order to survive, you will have to follow some simple tricks. A heavy tank main weakness is most of the time located on the lower part of the hull, which is where people will shoot 99% of the time, except if you hide it. That's my first advice. With a heavy tank, always be all down. Expose your turret, the strongest and most armored part of the tank, only, and hide the rest. This way, you will easily bounce off your opponents while being able to deal some damage. Once your view is clear, which means that being in all down, you manage to kill all your opponents in front of you, don't be afraid of moving from your position and attack first. You're a heavy tank. You are the one that must motivate the team to push. This is probably the most important advice I can give you here. It's a team play game which implies that every class of tank must fill its role. And your role is to go first, even if it implies taking some shots. And another advice I want you to learn is angling your tank. Because this game takes into consideration artificial armor, every time you angle it properly, you will increase it and therefore chances for your opponents to bounce you off. But be careful, even if the hull of most of the heavies is meant to be angled, it's not the case of the turret that you always want to keep in front of your opponents at all costs. After reviewing the mechanisms heavies are using, it's time to review the skill-based advice. The biggest one being map awareness, I'll take a look at it. Regardless of the tank you're playing with, checking your map is essential. This tool will allow you to make the proper move. You see that you're going along one side, you come back to the rest of your team. You see that your team is following you, you keep going. You see that one of your flank is about to collapse, you join your team for some heavy support. It's extremely important to take a look at it, because without it, you're completely blind and lack some precious informations about the enemy's movements. Now, it's time for me to highlight to you some special techniques for you to sustain on the battlefield. The best and most effective one with heavies is obviously all down, as we saw previously, but you also have the possibility of side scraping, which will allow you to show your side hull and turrets to your opponents. If you're doing this, wait for your enemies to shoot at your over-angled hull before moving out of your position and shooting them. Then, show again your hull while hiding and repeat the process till the death of your opponents. Now, it's time for us to combine all the elements I just gave you to see how it performs on the battlefield. As I'm a heavy tank and as I just told you, you need to push first. You are the guy that will take shots for the rest of your team. This is why I'm going straight to an advanced and aggressive position in order for me to be able to hold the line. From here, a quick look at the map will make me realize that I'm gonna get pushed by the enemies. This is why all of a sudden I decided to retreat. This is what map awareness looks like. From my position, you can also notice that the only thing my enemies are able to see is my turret. This is what we call all down. This is the strongest part of my tank and I'm not trying to angle it in front of my opponents to be able to bounce all their shots. That being said, and another quick look at the map makes me realize that the Krenwagen is completely alone, which is the perfect tank to shoot at because it has a low DPM. This is why I'm going in again, because thanks to my map awareness, I know that I'm not going to be alone and that the i7 was about to rush in to help me killing the Krenwagen. Now, it's only a matter of time before we win the game, because all we have to do right now is taking the life of the Grill 15 and the E100. For this, I'm still taking an all down position that I couldn't hold, unfortunately, because I took the shot straight into my all. But it's not a problem, because all we have to do right now is pushing through, realize that we have to deal first with the Grill 15, which is the low HP tank, and after going back to the E100 and killing the rest. And another advice I can give you is to be aware of your tank's abilities. There are three values essential for this. The gun, and most importantly the depression and the DPM, because those two elements will allow me to know if I could hold or lead a push, but also if I can push certain tanks being sure that I'll win. It also indicates me if my tank can sustain on hilly terrains or if I should focus on flatter grounds. 
It's followed by the mobility that will indicate me if I'm able to take aggressive positions in the early game or face a medium without being circled. Finally, the armor profile to learn what the best angling position is or if you can simply sustain high penetrating shots on some key parts of the tank, such as the turret. Linked to your knowledge of your tank, learn the playstyle of others. This way, you will know which tanks are your weaknesses and which one you could literally snap out of existence while rolling with them. For example here, the main difference between the T125 and the Kronwagen is the DPM. Me, the T125, features a way better DPM than my opponents. This indicates me that, based on my life points and his, I can safely rush and kill him without him being able to kill me first. Now, let's take a look at a replay where we take into consideration everything we talked about previously. At first, I'm heading straight to a position from which I can spot aggressively. Right after, I jump in that little hole right there to be able to protect my hull. This is called hull down. That being said, as I told you, I'm a heavy tank, I have an impressive turret armor and I know I can sustain on the battlefield from that position. But it is not satisfying, because from here, I'm still camping, which is the tank destroyer's job. This is why, after realizing I can't shoot the yo, I'm gonna go in straight. Not being a fool either, I'm taking my chance to shoot at the AT-15. Now, the second skill is going to take place, aka taking a look at the map. You see that the I-6 is quite exposed, and here I'm doing a quick calculus. I know the I-6 has a low pen penetration and also a low DPM, which is not my case. With a lover, you have an impressive DPM, but also a really good penetration. And I know that my turret armor and all armor are way better and therefore can't be penetrated by the I-6 when it comes to my upper part, which is why I pushed it and completely face dug him. By doing this, I prevented him from, first, being able to shoot at the rest of my team. I also allowed my team to push through and finally dig out a way to finish off by being in all down once again against the VK-101P. If you take a look once again at the map right now, you see that the enemies are splitted, which is not our case, and this is why we're pushing in, killing the VK and the Ice 3 at the same time. And clap, just like that guys, following those advices, you are going to see all your stats increased when you're playing with the heavy tanks. Of course, there is still a huge part of RNG to take into consideration, because those advice will not guarantee you 100% win rate, but at least it should improve it just a little bit. You still need to take into consideration the fact that sometimes you're going to play with bad players, sometimes great, sometimes your RNG is going to be against you, sometimes with you. It all depends on multiple factors, but I feel like I give you some key parts of the heavy playstyle to make yourself a better player. Hopefully you enjoyed guys, if that's the case feel free to subscribe, like and share and I'm gonna see you soon for a new guide. Bye.